Hello everyone, I'm Tyler Redland. Welcome to the Brush Sauce Theater uh, Challenge uh, with Adam Duff here. The reason for this and my shame cloak is because I forgot to cue in his audio when we recorded the first half of these critiques. So I had to go back and I just uh, cut out all the parts where he was talking so you don't have to watch you know, Adam's mouth move with uh, no audio, so I apologize. The first half of these will have his audio cut out, but you'll get the, you'll get my feedback anyway, so I'll chime in, I believe, on every piece, so hopefully you'll get some kind of sense what to do. If it's not the case and you wanted more, I really, really am sorry about that. It, we couldn't redo the audio, and uh, this takes... Um, if you wanted the full audio where, where I fixed it at about 45 minutes in, where it, everything's fine from there, all right? So let's begin. Hey everyone, I'm back here with Adam Duff, I'm Tyler Edlin, and we're doing the brush sauce contest, uh, the last sex, uh, sanctuary. I'm going to try to time these and we're going to speed roll through these and just give you guys the best and most direct tips that we can to help you guys progress these, because I assume that is why you wanted to participate and uh, submit these so you could better yourselves and just get some raw feedback. So we'll do the best we can to meet you there. All right, we have Sitnik, Alexandra, awesome. Okay, last sanctuary, we have some Birdie Forest. Look at this, look at this thing. What? That looks like a wet sloth. I don't even know. Yeah. Yeah, very creative use. Oh, um, let me see, how does this, the first thing I always like to look for is structure. Like structurally, how does this thing hold up with its values? Uh, that is always a great way to, uh, to kind of figure things out or yeah I think it just needs a little more structure and by that I mean like take see you already have this as the background it's already established as the background select it white everything out you know that's back there group it in a sense like make all this one value family so you can often go into levels you can do that you can uh, see I can add contrast I can take away contrast but yeah I would work that out so see now that we knocked and simplified all of that, that reads. And then you gotta do the same with however your focal point is. What would you what would you want to eh, chime in with this at this point, Adam? Yes, I just put out um, a YouTube video last week on uh, movement and rhythm. Check that out. You want to keep these sweeping kind of motions and uh, implied lines circulating the viewer's eye in, you know, and around. Uh, the the painting so we can use these elements within it to bring our eye always at the character see you have this rock this is a very small example when you're seeing you have this rock facing out well what if the rock was facing in at an angle right at the character it's a way better rock and it's helping serve your composition these are the types of things you want to plan out and consider in the design of your image but you know other than that it's not bad you have a really um dreamlike color scheme the concept is really good just simplify you really need to simplify so you have the full range of values right here within your foreground and your midground we don't need we don't in terms of a pictorial space it flattens things this is competing these are all little elements that are competing with your focal point because the contrast is at its highest yep we go from dark to very white so you have to minimize and group and simplify and that's probably going to be the majority of everyone's uh, faults. <laughs> it's, a, it's always like we tend to overcomplicate things. It's in our nature. We're humans. I think this is Daniel's. I didn't check the name. Dan, Dan's been working on that. He he has attended a few of our uh, the Brush Sauce Group's weekly uh, hangouts when we talk about this. But yeah, really? Uh, I think, Dan, this is heading in the, all the right directions. Structurally, this is exactly what we were just talking about. With the last piece, yours holds up structurally really well. Uh, for me, though, this is, I don't know where your intent was in terms of taking this, but this is very simple in terms of its overall execution and presentation, meaning it, it comes off as a color sketch. We have an awesome black and white comp, and we have a color sketch of that comp, um, meaning for me, this just lacks any kind of polish that we may want to get out of this. You may or may not be aware of that, <laughs> but that's how it comes off. And so, given that, I, in my opinion, your design is absolutely spot on, just go back and dump five hours making it look absolutely gorgeous. You have anything you want to add, Adam? Yeah, this wouldn't even, it wouldn't even hurt you if you made the character a bit bigger and made him right here in the foreground. And don't forget to balance all these warms with some cool colors as well, but uh, you're heading in a, a really solid direction. Okay, we have a scrapped idea. We got some references. 
really cool. I see what you're going for, and I like that. I think design-wise, this really holds up as well. Like it, like it has a really solid structure, and and I could tell you've been practicing that. I'd even push things like a bit further. Like take this whole area back here. Uh, we can just add a little bit of blue and a little bit of atmosphere to like this whole region, and it will help that even more. Very simple fix. So you go down to the blue. Add, see, add a little bit of that in there, and then you go back up to the this and take away just a little bit of that like that. See, little subtle tweaks like this can go a long way for you. And then basically, um, my my comment would be the same to you as it, personally as it was for Dan's. Uh, just take it from this really rough color sketch and polish that up. Put the detail in it. That that's the issue right there. He's also facing out of the canvas, so it everything's is bringing us out. And like I said, we have all this happening here. This is all dead space in terms of what you're utilizing. You have all this room and all this real estate. Bring something to visually anchor the, and bring balance to your image and utilizing all this kind of real estate that you have already invested in. Jansen, think of the setting on a washing machine low rinse. What? I don't... I. I don't even know what to make of that. I'm sorry if I'm just missing it. And some of you viewers that are like, it means this. Like, that's good. I'm, I'm not seeing the, the connection. <laughs> I like it. The other thing is, too, uh, this is a very static composition. If we want to kind of talk about that and break it down. You have our, our horizon line perfectly across the middle and every bit of information sitting right above that. Like we had just mentioned, this is all dead space. Nothing is nothing that's below the the horizon line is adding to what your image is probably trying to say. It, it's not bringing anything to it, and that's something to consider. You know, maybe you have lower angles, so there's you know you crop it out so that so that there's less of that. You know, something like this, and then. We have more of a perspective, and you can have ships kind of overlapping more things, kind of going at it. Really, like, kind of some simple things to kind of consider. And this is suffering the green problem. It's very kind of monochromatic green in here. You could definitely get some more like you know blue and some atmosphere in there to like really liven up some of these forms. It's feeling very flat. But. I like your designs of your ships a lot, and it, it really comes off as otherworldly. And if you were going for that, you certainly succeeded. All right, okay. I like... I like these sketches a little bit more. I, there's something about it that I think changed for me in it, and maybe it's because of the colors. I think the value structure on these are a lot better. And I like that even this one here feels a little bit more a a little less asymmetrical, or no, a little bit yeah, a little a little bit more asymmetrical because it seems like the uh, the horizon line changed at some point. It feels a little bit lower in this, and I think I like that a lot because up here with this image, the the horizon is somewhere up there, and I think it works better in this image because it's clearly at about like right here to like right here, and it's bringing me a little bit more into it. So we see more of the horse. The, the the tree's a little bit uh, more designed out, and then this side isn't. It's got a little bit more of that uh, angle to it that we see here in the comp, and then we have things leading to it. Um, and I like that more about this. And then I think here you got the value structure even a bit better. Not that it could be even pushed further, uh, but yeah, it's certainly interesting. A very uh, direct tank uh, take on the uh, theme. Yeah. The, yeah, this is this is pure, pure, pure white. You'd never want to go pure white. Do some studies of like Clyde Asbig or something like that. You know, get get out some. I'm seeing if I have any open windows just to kind of direct you in the right direction. Uh, this guy. Look at some of his scenes. He's doing a lot of what you seem to be aiming to do with your skies, with your clouds, with your vistas. Do some studies of him, man, and your work will improve slowly but surely it definitely will and look at this area we don't want this to come off as maybe quite as flat as it is think of like all the hills and the valleys and how like geometrically these things would be like 
kind of working with one another like how are these forms working how are the the contours kind of playing out you know is this a valley like this we have trees kind of going like that littler trees down here you want to use all this so it, it creates a real sense of space but anyways I like it the castle is coming along it, it's feeling way too warm by the way for the uh, the time of day you have these really kind of warm highlights I uh, probably wouldn't look like that unless it was sunset and given the the blue of the atmosphere in the sky yeah just that would be more of a neutral blue type of t uh, tone I feel all right Adrian thanks for entering let's let's see how yours uh, turned out I recognize your work you have a very distinctive style and I think that's commendable yeah this is really uh, illustrative and, and creative at the same time maybe like a little bit too monochromatic for me like I think you have a little bit of wriggle room in your palette yeah get see like it's a very desaturated green get some green in there like some more saturation get a little bit of more yellow so even dropping this in like on a uh, pro probably even on an overlay will really spice up like the flavor in that color. Let me just let me try. That. See, look at that. Like I just touched that and it came to life. So let me see. What do we? Yep. And you could even do that with like these purples and the, the glows back here. Like if you take that, spice it up with like a little bit of this blue like in places maybe not even that much but like there's a lot of little subtle wiggle room that you can certainly kind of get and bring your palette uh, to life but on that like this is really well designed out you have a really cool design going on here the characters are really intricate and you know i guess you it, it shows that you put a real lot of time and thought into that i i simplified i simplified it a bit i think you could get a little bit more uh contrast with your value range too as well as your colors it, it kind of like if you squint your eyes it, it all like yeah we could see the difference but you know push that a little bit more bring him you know a little closer to us in the background a little further uh, for sure definitely like you can select everything here in the foreground and knock the background back a bit and that, that will fix a lot of the issue here but really cool dude all right. Yes, yes, this one. Looking cool. I remember seeing this in the group. So let's look up some of these comps. Yeah, all very dynamic. And and these have like a, a solid looking of a little bit. I, I think, again, pushing, we've had this comment a few times, at least for me, a little bit more push of that volumetric lighting and that atmosphere. You're going to see, with all the waterfalls, you're going to see water vapor and particles all over this type of environment and you'd want to like i think like most paintings you want to ex even exaggerate that a little bit you know get little hints of you know extra atmosphere here and there having like the nice cooler you know tones mixing with the the warmer ones back here i usually like to even add a little bit of noise to to like the mist and the vapor i paint because it, it adds a little bit more uh, color variety to it very subtle things see like that and because like if we look at the shadows, the shadows are just much too flat all throughout your whole scene. There's no sense of bounce light. There's no, there's a, a lack of form to them. And you'll want to just get in there with um, any kind of brush. Let me see what I can find. Uh, let me try this one for instance. Just make a quick note. Probably just, oh, I got to, I wonder why my brush was acting up. Yeah, I think my Photoshop is running really slow because I have like 40 files open right now. And it, do it doesn't like that. See, so, okay, these are all your shadows. Well, imagine if we like took and we warmed them up even ever so slightly. Like, see, so really going to grab some of these neutrals and sculpting out how some of these forms are working. See, like, you're seeing, like, actually in this case, we're a little bit more blue. The water, I see, I want to go more blue. See, trial and error. A lot of these nice kind of cooler shades over here working out you know maybe not quite that bright but having form to them is where it's it's really kind of lacking like having you know having this be like the outer part and then okay yeah, I gotta work out the front too and I usually do that by making it a little bit warmer of a color so you have this nice kind of balance but that's my biggest fix it's you know overall the, you know, the noise uh, the edges are a little bit jittery you could 
maybe simplify some of these these forms just a bit, make them really direct. This is a weird type of shape to have above uh, the main castle, I feel. And it's just like really contrasty and distracting. I think when in doubt, just, just cut it out. If you wanted to make more of a dip, you know, something like, like this would be like a little bit more bold, I feel. And bring us like right to the uh, the fortress. Little subtle things you can do throughout the whole image, but for mostly work on your shadows and the forms for your rocks. But it's you know it's got a good flow overall. The composition works works for me. Uh, there's just parts of it that feel very rushed or uh, loose. If you want to get the consistent quality uh, throughout it, you just have to go back and and really dump time into polishing. Uh, and that's something like, you know, we always assume when we're getting better and better that paintings will take us longer, but your taste will also improve and you're going to want to refine more and more. So if maybe like if you're not spending at least 20 hours and maybe you have, then like it does, they do take a certain amount of time to really add that level of polish. All right, Weijin, let's see. This is a really cool, um, Weijin. Walter from Walter. Thank you, Walter. <laughs> oh, this is cool. Yeah, this is really creative again, and I think it's really, uh, I think it's really drawn out really well. You put a lot of thought into this. It looks like it. Um, with that said, I love your idea and your concept. I'd give that top, uh, you know, rec yeah, thumbs up. Uh, for me, what's issue? There's there seems to be some perspective inconsistencies with it. Particularly on a lot of the the more computer part related things, there there is some weirdness that's going on, uh, and then it's the the rendering of some of the materials. Like you, you're handling uh, skin the same way as steel, as the same way as metal clamps, as the copper. You have a very samey type of approach to rendering your materials, and you're going to work on. I rec would recommend doing material studies. It's a very kind of classic little uh, technique, uh, an exercise to work on. You put a light on, so do still lifes. Still lifes, I think, would help you a lot. So you had, in your thumbnail, you had the entire background as like a, a, in a room with the lights off. You need that back. You need that back. There's no reason we want to really light that up. It, it really helps structure it a lot better. Yeah, really complicated scene that you've challenged yourself with, and that's commendable. Yes. Yeah, that is filled with. Yours is filled with narrative, and I and I really do appreciate that. All right, this one with his signature style. This is like the same case, I don't know, with this. I like this this thumbnail a lot more here. I don't know why. <laughs> I just do. I think the bloom light around him is overplayed a little bit too much, and you lose a lot of these nice forms, you know, that's in your, that your head there, even if you were trying to embellish the shape of this guy more. And I like, I did, I don't know, I'm, maybe I'm in a lower horizons today, but it, this just seems a lot more magnificent and majestic than kind of just... Maybe it, you're, it, this was your strategy to cover up a lot of the detail you didn't have to paint. Um, it's like hiding characters' feet in water and stuff. You know, it's almost like an easy way out. <laughs> yeah, it seems like this was um, like a tw you were going for a twilight hour uh, type of image, and I think it's just way too much like warms versus blue. And it's like way too obvious. You'd want to look at like more subtleties in in Twilight Hour paintings. I was looking. I did. Let me look and see if I can do Twilight Hour. And there there should be lots of greens and subtle blue, like like all these colors you wouldn't think of, but you do it in a very subtle way, and it um is really a gorgeous time to paint. Photographers love that time of day. Um, and honestly, I I don't want to show you to misdirect you any of these. 
these terrible references actually that I see. Nothing, <laughs> nothing is coming in my mind right here that um, is actually working. So I I apologize. It's I guess I see it more in animated films. Studio Ghibli Ghibli uses them a lot, particularly in some of the work. But yeah, this it just feels too forced. Even it's too too uh, too in your face. You got to play up the. Uh, what I'm trying to say, the subtleties of it, having that nice kind of bright and saturated, warm, you know, horizon that we see beyond the scope of the mountains. And then you can break up the forms with some of the clouds, and, you know, there's lots of... Then you get into, like, oranges. There's, like, a lot of oranges in in a lot of this. And that transi transition, you, you know, what do you have basically between the yellows and the oranges and the blue with the twilight coming in? You have these subtle... All these variations right here of greens and yellows that you actually do see in the sky. Um, so yeah, I would just get some more uh, reference in regards to that and keep pushing it. But you know, the character and the horse and everything—they're really beautifully drawn. They wouldn't expect anything less. So uh, yeah, a really nice idea. BST. This one. Okay, we. I'll... Okay, so yeah, this is a. Uh... I like this. This is a, a the last kind of like human city, and it's built within this huge protective wall. And you can see the silhouette of bugs on the outside. Yeah, and I honestly didn't know that till I started reading all this. You need to make this a little bit more clear. This is way too fuzzy and soft. Yep. Y this composition works, and even the structure is there, but it your forms get so loose and rough in places that I think you could really say a lot by going back and spending two hours just cleaning things up, you know, and that's like, okay, like zooming in here, for instance, like, see, we have like this such a sketchy, sketchy edge, and this could be, you know, part, you know, more subjective for me, because I like really strong edges in a lot of my work, like, you know, that's like taking that Okay, now we have an edge there. Now we have, okay, this is something that's going across here, right? So now we have this. Now we have this as a sky. So we can go in, we paint the sky, solidifying this edge out, you know, even more. Edge, edge, you know, it's it's cleanup work. And I feel your piece would benefit tremendously from it. Yeah, you don't, don't. Yeah. Every, everything in here. Because you just want to imply, you get the idea, like, you just want to imply everything in the shadow. But at the same time, it, you know, you have to ask yourself what expenses, the, you know, the rest of it. The shapes, the shapes of everything still need to read really well. And that's what I was referring to, is, like, cleaning up the shapes. But I really like this. Probably one of my favorite ideas so far that I've seen. So creepy. This is an, a neat take on it too. Haley. Poor little fella. <laughs> Look at the grandmas. <laughs> I I you nailed the narrative and uh, the storytelling in this without a doubt. And you know what? All your edges are really clear. There's a lot, there's a, this is, there is a sincere clarity to this that I admire. Yeah, I was going to make a video this week about this, Adam, and about framing. It all comes down to frame, and I'm going to try to, as quickly as possible, illustrate this. Like this, you got to, we always have to ask ourselves, you know, what is the, uh, what is the image about, primarily? And having this, this kind of hierarchy uh, of what things are kind of pertaining to. So let me see. I, I had this idea. Okay, so like, if this is about this mouse, right? I think uh, how I would have approached this anyway would have been something more along like, okay, we have a really low thing here. We have, you know, the the um, the bucket here, and then we can see from very much that that mouse, you know, kind of perspective. We're like, down, we're feeling the sweat come off this little guy. Like he is. He is scared, you know, for his life. And, you know, here's his little tail ringing out, and here's the bucket. And then you see in, like, out of focus a bit, you see the crazy grandma, you know, in in the background. Or, like, you know, really, you, you set her, like, from the perspective, like, she's, like, a mile away in the, from the mouse's, you know, point of view. It's a crazy grandma here. They're 
for big fun. She's holding her weapon. But like, yeah, you could like take the elements, drag and drop them, recompose them, so that the image is really stating like, it goes from like this generic, um, well not like generic, but like more of like a static, kind of like we're a fly on the wall, to bringing us into the scene and immersing us into the moment of what's going to, you know, happen. Another good one is like you, you even take this idea, you zoom it out even a little bit more, something like this. You change the level of zoom on, on these images and uh, it changes everything. Always does. Uh, so what do we have here? The bucket. And then like imagine if you had like the grandma's eyes just sneaking, you know, here she is with her crazy hair. And so like she's a lot closer and she's sneaking up on it. Like you could totally change so many different things and it, eh, you know. Yeah, night, really great idea though. Watch your highlights. It's definitely overexposed throughout. You blew them, you blew the highlights out. All right, really cool. Look at these references. All right, all right. There's a little bit of a, a flow thing going on with this. Uh, I see your references. I see what's inspired you, but like have having this kind of just divide things up like this we have this whole action here then we have element b and element a right it there's there's way too much symmetry coming on for like this really kind of epic natural type of scene like you wouldn't want to compose like a shot in lord of the rings that would look this symmetrical with this being like the outlier this one element we need more than that so take your core components and which is hills, mountains, and a guy. See how you can really arrange, rearrange them so that, you know, this is the worst guy ever, but he's there. He's the guy with the stick, the cloak. We all know him. His name's Frank. And see how you can lay out the scene so that, like, yeah, he's going on a journey and it's going to be to this house at the edge of this valley. And then, okay, how can we do that valley? Well, we can put you know, maybe something like that where so he curves around and this house is at the end of it. This is like the worst drawing ever, I'm sorry. See right, you know what I'm you know you know what I'm trying to draw out of look at that house over here. It's oh, oh, thank you, thank you. So then we got the rocks down here. We put this guy into the scene, transitioning that to there. Then we have this is like And then if you want to do even more background mountains, then just you know, have them go in a very non just not like asymmetrical way. So if we have this taking up that whole corner, probably in this one I'd do it maybe like a little more like that. So we take your elements, we re we 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 regurgitate them back on the on the same canvas, the same picture plane, so that it's just a little bit more of an interesting layout. Mm-hmm. It's varieties of spice of life. With that said, you want to keep refining your um, your polish as well. There's too much, I think, looseness kind of happening. Too many lost edges. It's always like the quickest way to get a painting done, as I say, is always to like make sure your edges are really kind of clean and crisp throughout it. And the, the lighting almost feels a little bit too generalized for for some of what this this burst of light that was happening there. You know what I mean? Kind of coming up like that. And, you know, really think of like how these forms you know can be arranging. You, then you get your color arranging that. So everything can have form in these paintings instead of just going with the the old generic type of hump, right? <laughs> But it's really cool. I think it's getting there. I, 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 I can really to re relate to where you are with kind of pushing these images to the next level. I, we've all been there. Um, and keep going with it. Keep getting references. Mm -hmm. That's worth noting. Yeah, we see this one. We see, we see some mid stuff all the time. It's great stuff. Really nice uh, 
cinematic lighting. You have a nice rim light from the exterior, and you have the bounce light. Uh, you have off-camera frontal illumination, which is, you know, it works really well. I'd even just take things and just simplify them a little bit more even. Take, take everything back here and just darken it. People always think, oh, if it's in the background, it has to be lighter as it goes in space. But this is one of those instances that it'll just really, you could play things up by just simplifying a little bit more of that, a little bit more than what you have, but uh, really cool. There. But overall, your, your drawing's really solid and you have, you nailed the camera angle. This is, you got right what I think we failed at with a, a few other pieces looking at. You put us right into the scene in this moment and it makes it all that much more frightening. So, uh, really good job. All right, Lakshmi. Really cool. Um, Otherworldly, in a sense. I'll make this giant. Um, your process. I think your most... I don't know if this is like some kind of chronological order you went in. But for me, this is a lot better. Mm-hmm. That, that, and that's that's what was throwing me off the blues and the atmosphere and that for me it captured that sense of depth a lot uh a lot more which is why i i kind of more gravitated towards it and then i still think there's room for a little of that stretching like bringing in a little bit more of that that blue to kind of work out you know some of these neutrals so it doesn't feel like blue even though slowly kind of trying to feel around like what I can get away with. And that's what you gotta do is trial and error everything to see what, what's pushing things too far. See like, this is just a much stronger uh, shadow color than than this. And then you can bring that up. And then just adding a little bit of that color. And then see, you, I like the idea that you had this in a forest. Take a little bit of that back. Uh, so see, it's pure gray almost. Go up a little more saturation, uh, add a little bit of color to it. So you, you can just hint at uh, the uh, trees back there. Like, yeah. little. oh, I want to overlay. No wonder why things are not working out for me. Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't switch it back. It, it, I can't blame, I cannot blame the, I cannot blame the program for this, but. Right. Yeah. When you were in Russia. <laughs> but then you got to work up. You, forests are usually pretty organic. You want to keep a nice little rhythm to, if you're going to add trees back there. Like how you can make them look, you know, really interesting and, and varied and all that good stuff. But it's a really cool idea, really, like a little ant colony, really interesting. Everyone, I'm back. Uh, we're at the midpoint where I always do a save check, and apparently I didn't check the audio at the beginning. So this is at the point. I probably, I definitely apologize at the beginning, but Adam's audio is is back on now. Yay! So now you can I, hear me again. I apologize for all of you. He he loved everyone's up here. I had to trim out his audio segment, so you're just not looking at a blank screen of Adam not really. Yeah. Uh, so you're not so watching we, me move my mouth. We we have to up. press on. No, we, this happened to us once before, and we went back and redid the whole thing. But this time of year is just so insane. Yeah, we have yeah. to just we have to go on, and I we sincerely apologize. And it's Don't my fault. Worry. It's not Adam's. It's all. We won't get. You won't have to listen to my horrible Russian impression now, which is yeah. It's much better. He's been half Russian, half the half the day. <laughs> so, all right, who do we? Have? Ooh, this Thanks. is really nice, Matej, Matej Kosovsky. Or Matej. I have a very last sanctuary vibe about this. I like that. Oh wow! Look at that. I think you planned it out. You got you got the lighting pretty cool too. A depth for lens blur thing's interesting, what you got right there. I'll use some 3D in there, it looks like, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really cool. Oh, quality. 
quality. Ooh. Yeah, so, well, uh, what's to say? I mean, this is well, a very successful work have, of art. Yeah. You have some indication of the form of the out exterior of the room, kind of like this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that changed in the final, but I would in, I'd maybe hint at a, a little bit of that mm -hmm. on the walls, because we see that too much right here, and then there's just nothing. Mm -hmm. It makes me kind of like, just like a little hint of that detail. Just a little hint. Nothing that's going to take us out of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, like if you actually zoom away, Tyler, you're going to see that some of those flags, for instance, that are the, some of the wall decorations, although subtle, which I like the subtlety of it, are almost completely lost. And you'd want to maybe have a glint of light or something catch it just to draw your eye there. So you go, ah, okay. You catch one, you'll catch them all. But the way the, the way it stands now, you put that effort in and we completely lose that detail. So those kinds of things you probably want to... Just uh, make sure you're not your efforts aren't in vain type of idea. And there's this other part, Adam, that I'm going to bet that you didn't notice right now. There's there's more there's a deeper narrative to this happening at play. Okay. There's two characters in the scene, and it looks like they're going to duel for this throne. Is that what's going on? I think. I thought so. they were statues. They look kind of like statues. They look like characters. I could see it in the sketches. Uh, that's okay. What I was uh, okay. Like, ah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I totally interpreted that as being kind of like these blue glass like almost ice sculptures that had a kind of bit of a like a lich king type of blue ice type of quality so about this it. has yeah some really nice detail in the foreground by the way this this definitely has that that type of keyframe type of vibe to it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if we're in the realm of illustration though i don't think this would work in terms of that uh the, the colors are much much too muted you'd want to see you want to feel a little bit more of the colors in it but then if it's about these characters dueling that's not the vibe either of us got for quite a long time into this we'll yeah no uh, yeah and you also where make you it place about the characters them. yeah well, to, in, in the illustration world right it's it's about the moment it's about the character so you always have to really ask yourself those questions when designing a scene from you know in the, in the thumbnail stage is like what is the best way to show this yeah and so that's clearly obvious you're gonna have to to if you want to fix that with this you're gonna have to make these silhouettes pop like really pop right now th this is the only thing that's popping is that right. throne and that's due to the contrast the other thing is too even in your references i've seen it you have like some nice flames illuminating things some more direct overhead light mm -hmm. you'd want to like illuminate that more like e even adding even if that's adding some some uh, like braziers with the flames kind of going around you know, yeah different structure yeah that would make a big difference too and that's maybe taking these guys and like really kind of illuminating his his uh, silhouette you know maybe putting a you know part of that light on the ground there so yeah. you can see him and him you gotta you gotta work around your their cinematography tricks to make these two characters pop and read yeah because it, it, it is difficult on this type of shot setup. I kind of describe it to my students sometimes when it comes to this kind of what Tyler's describing. Imagine you're looking at a stage. You're looking at a, a play on an actual live stage. And there's somebody acting. But the spotlight's shining on the other side of the screen. On the, the other side of the stage. And the, the actor's in the dark. doesn't make a lot of sense, right? You'd want to have that character standing in the light. It's the same principle. It's You're not being too obvious or or contrived by doing so. You're just directing your attention to where you want people to look. So don't be afraid to be very blunt with your statements as far as narrative is concerned. Hey, look at that. That's pretty freaking gorgeous. I, I don't even want to start this off. I'm biased because he's he just took my mentorship like a month ago. He, and it, this, I think this is awesome, but I'm, so I'm a little biased. You go. I think it's crap. I think you should get your money back personally. <laughs> no, I think don't listen to him. Don't listen to him, Anton. <laughs> I, well, I, well like, John Howe said this best. When you do your job right, the art should do the speaking for you, right? And this art speaks for itself. I think it's absolutely beautifully it rendered. Um, I think the composition is very strong. I think the character is a little lost in terms of volume because, and this is a very common mistake with lighting, you only rim light your character, but there's no light on the face of it. A little bit of bounce light catching some of that three-dimensional volume on the side that's facing us is important because otherwise he just looks like a cardboard cutout. He looks very two-dimensional, right? He's working on his characters. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. that strong. But yeah. that said, this is the... What, what did I name this guy? I had a name for him earlier. We've seen this character before. Make. I would like to encourage the community as a whole, not just the brush Oscar, but the Archimy. Let's. What can we do to like get away from the trend of getting a guy with a stick? I don't know. Yeah. It's uh, my personal gripe with it all. Right, right, we all have pet peeves. 
mm -hmm. this point, I'm just so done with seeing that guy. Let's get a new actor on. Let's get a let's get a character with like a fishbowl or something. Yeah, something. You know, yeah. we'll call him Ralph. You know, yeah. Ralph. Ralph with the staff. Ralph yes. the adventurer. We. We have to, do, we do have to get beyond that to really, with environmental work particularly, which this is mostly about is the environment and the scene, to really push mm -hmm. their narrative in these things. It's going to have to come to adding more interesting uh, supporting details like yep. this character. He's a supporting detail. It's not, the image is not about your character. We all know that. That's really easy and that's obvious from your design. But at the same time, as a supporting detail, we could do, we could push things to me. Like, what if there's a character dragging another character's body? to this like on a stretcher or mm -hmm. you see like two groups of guys even like you know one and two and they're, they're carrying like maybe they're taking him to this this last sanctuary to revive the character all of a sudden the narrative is put getting pushed 200 yeah. percent because we're putting a little bit more thought into our supporting actors right right just something for you to consider my friend yeah and it's important too because 99 percent of the time wh why do we see a character in a scene with a with a with a building or whatever it's scale comparison we want to see how scale. big we want to see how big this in this this building is with relation to a human character something we can identify with but by giving that character purpose right by actually giving that character it's purpose you're to the next level yeah you're giving this context. You're giving this whole piece context and purpose, right? So, and that's what a lot of us just want to do is get our art to that next level. Yeah. And it's little subtle things for someone, like particularly where you are, where you're really getting good at doing atmosphere and lighting and everything and even setting up your comps. Yeah. That narrative element could push things out. And we talked about this at each and every week when we met. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Use those characters to sell to sell the moment to sell yeah. the story environments are huge parts of storytelling and it's a very small effort you don't have to you small don't have effort. to spend three hours on it you just have to put give that kind of attention to your drawing, piece like drawing well proportioned stick figures doing like not that much effort hey Kara how you doing it's nice to see you at the hangout this week we do a hangout in the brush house community every night and every Monday at 9 ish p.m. Eastern if you guys want to come and chill and do art Nice, 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 nice. I should come check it out myself. You should, Adam. Yeah. This is cool. I like what you were going for. Yeah. Yeah. This is lovely. I think uh, there's two things. The the uh, puce clouds against the puce mountains flattens a bit because we're not getting any value depth there. It's the same value it's... and the same color. And symmetry. Yeah. You've got a very, very, you know, mirror-imaged centered image and it's there's nothing knocking off that symmetry so to speak at all so by doing by keeping it two down the middle character in the middle everything in the middle it creates it feels a little bit redundant and plain you need to knock that that balance off a little bit That's yeah I, I talked i talked with um someone about this this week as well it, it th this is okay i'm not i don't, I don't want to be the the symmetry bully but in my opinion, there's ways you can make things far more interesting. What is it about? Is this image about, again, that character's journey to the um, to that tower? Is, is this image about that tower specifically? And you can also kind of carry an equal weight to these things as well. He, A friend who did a very similar thing. It was a, a bridge going to some gate with some stairs. It was very far removed, a very similar angle to this. And I'm just going to go, I'm just on a slight detour to like what, how I reconstructed it. To, to to really help push what the image is about and it was it was this scene here which is just, it was just a rough sketch and i just like i liked it because he wanted mm. to be about a stronghold gate so I, like that's what i did i asked myself again what is your image about it is about this gate this gate is not you know 80 percent of my scene 70 percent and i can add the characters as i didn't read down there and they could be doing whatever they need to be doing to, mm -hmm. you know, but like really figure out and ask yourself what what is about it is about the tower will sell some sell the idea of your tower if your image is about your pagoda there mm -hmm. put a nice fancy angle on it dress it up put three point perspective whatever you need to do put you've already got the right idea by beaming that light right on the face of it which is a bit yeah. overexposed while i'm at it but you have the right idea like take taking you know a dark very muted palette and beam some saturation some light on that tower but at this same, I'd love to encourage you to not settle on your first sketch, which is the other lesson of this. It looks like you came up with a comp for this, right as it is directly in the sketchbook, and kind mm -hmm. of committed, jumped into color. Do six comps. Do ten comps. Mm -hmm. Work and finesse that idea. Beat the, the dead ideas out of it. and You work it out. You pull and you stretch it until it's 
it evolved. It, yeah, and until it clicks, it. you know, something when you know you get it, you're gonna go ah. Something. Sometimes you just gotta flush. You gotta get all the all the the stale exactly. ideas out first, right? Yeah, absolutely. So but I the, would like everybody to like never settle on your first comp because I can guarantee you it's not going to be the best. No, no, it never is. Speaking from experience, it never is the best idea. Look at this. I've got him. I've been I've been sending some Witcher art. I've been drawing all week. It, it's like. I'm like on the fourth or fifth pose just drawing these damn guys. And I was like, at one point in time, right, I was content with how they originally looked. But like he helped me beat the, you know, the ugliness. Like he's been helping me beat the ugliness out of it. It's like I get so attached to it. I'm like, well, this is kind of working. What do you think? You know, it, you got to bounce ideas around and not settle, yeah. basically. Yeah, we do that all the time. I mean, I, I can't get through a lot of my pieces without Tyler just looking at it and going, fix that. And I go, right, you know, and I can struggle with it for, for days and he, he'll just, he'll give it two seconds it's and point eyes. in the right spot. Shingar Maresh, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not going to say your name. Can you read that, Adam? Shingaru Gamesh, Shingaru Gamesh. That's really a nice cool name, name. actually. Beautiful. <laughs> it's a lot more interesting than Adam. This is really cool. You, you've went from like uh, a moment, an action, like a story moment type piece to a very, yeah. very, very much a character centric piece. Yeah, and I I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I personally do think this is a lot more interesting, a lot more stronger. Mm -hmm. I I like the moment, I like the action, but yeah. let's let's really look at what happened here. Uh, uh, really cool. The color saturation. I know Adam is probably if he if I don't say it first, he will. Uh, um, not it's not killing me, you know, no, I, but it's, because it's, there's a nice balance. But it's I mean maybe a bit heavy. The only all over. Yeah, the yeah. only balance in is that it's equal saturated. Yeah. Um. And the values are consistent with them, at least, which is good. But it, this is very much that blue versus yellow we looked at in the mm -hmm. the piece from the beginning. Like this is this got a lot more balance to it. I feel overall because okay, the, yeah. this this guy is this color, this color, this color. We could separate it in the foreground. We just have this. When we have equally saturated yellows in the background, to the midground, to the foreground. Mm -hmm. That's that's when things feel a little bit flat for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even though this piece. Let's just we just talk about the drawing for it. I think it's beautifully drawn. It's it's the color work that I think needs to get pushed. Yeah, because it yeah. reads well, right? It reads really well. But yeah. it's like the color. It's just like getting suck, you know, punching the eye with the yellow and then sucker punch with the blue because it's just too much stimulation. Yeah, so playing with you know, try to find some desaturated, some grays. You know, a subtle these these one of the old expressions I love is masterful use of color is very often found in the grays, not in these heavy saturations. And a little quick trick is uh, remember, well, this doesn't apply everywhere because I find there's a lot of success in this in this work of art, but in a cartoony world, the lack of detail calls for you to compensate with heavier punches of color very often. Contrary-wise, if you're looking for something more realistic, the texture and the detail of real life can call for subtler colors, right? Mm -hmm. So really well look said. for that. Look for that balance somewhere, right? Look for that balance. But I think you you went for something so abstract, and very stated with the color that mm -hmm. it, it's not a failure. You pull it off, you know. You pulled it off. So I'm I'm not I, I'm very being very careful with how I'm critiquing Boring. this. Here's some of those yellows and those greens I was recommending for mm. the other uh, for yours, Roberto. Yeah. Right here. That's exactly what I was talking about. Yeah. 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 Great job. Yeah. Really well drawn. Um, yeah, just keep working on the rendering too. It it does feel a little rougher in places the way like the the forms are kind of handled in the character a little bit muddy, but um, the, I mean I can't argue with the drawing in this. It's and the storytelling and the idea mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all all there. Okay, here we are. Last sanctuary four, version four. Now this one read it's okay in terms of good contrast and compositional read when Tyler before we started recording Tyler put this one up like he had put this one up among the other ones this is the one that grabbed my eye first and the main reason was because this is a very graphically good read it had a nice sense of contrast and a good read so something to be said something to be said in that regard yeah i would take a little some of the, a little bit of this uh, over exposure down you know, bit it's mm -hmm. a little like we when we when you can't see where the horizon is, that that can be a problem unless right. it's so obscured by fog and mist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
In which case you wouldn't be getting whites, right? Yeah, this is purely water against against sky. Yeah. So you got to keep that that in mind. The other thing to take into account is yes, there is what's happening under the water in the shadow that will influence the color of the water, but water in, is in in its, its very essence is transparent. It's there's no mm-hmm. color to it. The, any surface light that we're going to see is a reflection. And what's it reflecting? It's reflecting the sky, right? So remember, the, the reflections won't necessarily be uh, this green that you've picked. You're going to look for look to the sky for that, right? Yeah. And usually wanna... if you're going to find colors, it's going to be in the sh- where ca- there's cast shadows on the water. That's when you can see through it. And you can actually see what's underneath the water. I think things are a little too claustrophobic with this, Adam. I was just looking at it for a while, deliberating. Uh, but we have the ship here, which is a real primary asset with the scene. And it, it looks good in perspective, and it's drawn well. And then we have, you know, your Skull Rock, basically, your sanctuary here. They're just, like, a little too close. There's there's not much, like, bringing us to in terms of the actual flow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, some of your references down here do that really, really well. Like, if we want to have... You know, different ways to uh, kind of articulate that journey more, like having that horizon, putting maybe that more on the horizon, definitely separating these, you know, cliffs or bluffs and, you know, very much a different arrangement of these forms so we can have more of a push on things or maybe put the, it, it feels like just widen things up a bit even, or mm-hmm. take the ship and pull it back a little bit more to the side, just so we can give that a little bit more, you know, room to breathe, if that makes sense. Uh, also be careful with your blacks there's overexposure and there's also underexposure your clouds are overexposed your mm-hmm. shadow on the on the, the back of your of your ship is black yep. and again in real life you're not going to in real life exposure you're not going to get that that's an underexposure issue so make sure you're getting some of that bounce light from the water and stuff like that that'll make yeah, a big difference really figure out the form and then yeah. this gets really flat all over in here the same value structure you want to separate. You really want to separate that, uh, and then continue just drawing through. Take some of these island photos that you have here that are gorgeous. Mm-hmm. You know what is really making up. You know these different you know, variety of shapes and how how can you use those to really sell. You know the idea of these as three dimensional forms. Right. Do drawovers. I I think I just had put a video about that up a little while ago. On YouTube, check it. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Nice job. Mm-hmm. Though. Yeah, very nice. I love, I love the composition of this piece. Very nicely done. All right, what do we got next? It's small. That's very small. Yeah, it still ben. reads. That's a good sign. Ooh, look at this. Hey Ben. That's lovely use of color. Nice idea. I like a lot of yeah. Cats. You have a lot of nice storytelling colors going on here, and it uh-huh. and it shows. I think it really reflects that you put a lot of time into researching uh, some moods and palettes for this because it's definitely one of the stronger elements of this. Mm -hmm. Really nice sweeping and flowing shapes. Like, yours has got the form. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. I'd even play up that a little bit. Like, you have, like, some nice uh, indicators of light and form here. I would just grab uh, some kind of chisel brush and just kind of sketch out even. Let me try to find... Trying to find my brush. Oh, this brush I think I was looking for, which is absolutely huge on this. Let me see. So, like, having a little bit of that idea of that light kind of wrapping around it. You just show the uh, the, the atmosphere light kind of just touching a little bit of these forms. Yeah. And yeah. it'll really kind of help that out a lot. Not that this is, like, a great rock drawing that I just did. but And then, like you did down here and stuff with the, the warmer light. Mm-hmm. here and everything just really kind of play that up to kind of show that light kind of coming in and and wrapping around same thing here I, I may have pushed it even like a little too far but yeah but now we can actually see around we can see the yeah. rock is not just a Keep flat corner it's a, it's actually a rounded form right that makes it feel more like a natural form in that sense it doesn't feel like a, the thing a, this is this is a nice setup but at the end of the day, too, if, if we're talking almost purely illustration, imagine what this would look like in this moment, this story moment, mm-hmm. if you take it and we trim all the business off of it. Mm-hmm. Imagine if you had a scene now and it's 
entirely con oh, this, I now I have to do this for my next YouTube video. It's because it's so. Imagine if we had something like this, and it's mm -hmm. entirely entirely designed around this. So you have this. You have maybe like a little bit of that form. We can see there. We the steps yeah. kind of coming down and around, like right here even. And then you can do uh, different parts on the side, kind of leading, you know, up to that even. And then they take the green. Look at all you haven't. You, all of the information you had in the original is still there. You know, you've just you've just zoomed yeah. the camera into the business end. It's, of it. a, it's yeah. about this. Yeah. Not to that. say that you should entirely discard what you did. That that's like a good like. All right, this is the idea, and then this is the moment. Right. You could even take. Um, all your existing mountains that you did copy and paste them back there so you almost have like the same level of detail with mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. But definitely consider this is for everybody, your crop. Like what is your image trying to say? What is it about? Mm -hmm. Because even so, these are still fairly small characters even cropped in like that. I'm gonna go out so many times. There we go. But this is a beautiful painting. I really do like it a lot. I like the hints of things back here and the, the vastness of this. Really yeah. awesome. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, what do we got? Eric. Eric Asaya. Yes. Holy shit, this is some high fantasy stuff going on here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that castle's actually growing out of the of the lizard. I hope that lizard's not moving. It's hard to tell. One of the things I'm struggling with is it's hard to tell if that if the building is growing out, if that castle's growing out of the lizard or if it's behind the lizard. I'm not quite sure. I think it's growing out of the lizard. Well, that said, I'll speak for both of us here. There's a clarity. There's like a this is a high end concept, and when yeah. you have these kind of concepts that are that almost tiptoe into the realm of surreal, mm -hmm. you need to make everything that's on you know front and center on the stage here absolutely clear. Mm -hmm. And I get and there's a little bit a uh, little bit of that disconnection for me, and just in regards to that, because it's like, and on one hand. He's Adam's looking at this and trying to figure out the relationship between this lizard and the city. And I'm looking mm -hmm. at this thing, and I'm like, "What is what is happening here? What what mm -hmm. is all this?" I I can see you're going for some kind of lava or some kind of barren land, but like the whole setup is really like I'm confused about it because like is he coming out of some lava pit? Is he surrounded by like volcanic wasteland? Is this some kind of alien scourge thing that just stat? I have too many unanswered questions, personally. Mm -hmm. Now, there's something to be said about about surrealism in that regard. If you look at uh, if you, well, surrealism or abstract, if you look at, for instance, Escher's work or uh, or Dali's work, they're surreal. They are confusing in some cases, but they are very clear. the 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 ambiguity, the abstract nature of the painting is very, very uh, obvious, right? It's not, it doesn't look like a, a mistake or an oversight. It, everything looks like it's been well thought out and planned, planned yeah. but planned in a way that creates visual confusion, right, on purpose. So it's kind of, you've got to be careful how you walk that line. It's a very delicate line, but just something to take into account. For I don't know if that was your deliberate attempt or not, right? Yeah, like for instance, if this is our shape, right, of our, of our lizard, and that castle is on top of them, even if this is the case now, Mm -hmm. That castle is going to look like this coming yeah. out of his head. If that's the case, yeah. See what I mean? Like, it, and it's these little micro decisions that are made throughout your entire piece is what makes it a little bit too confusing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, take that with. Um, I, I, we sincerely mean that, just in terms of helping you. Out. We're not trying to pick on you. It's no, no, no. It's, it's just a clarity thing. Because what that does, yeah, it takes us away. It, it it takes away from our ability to enjoy it because like, we have too many. We're distracted by that. Like, instead. what is the relationship right. between this as an idea and all of this? Mm -hmm. You have two very different ideas at play here, and within the right context, they can work. Mm -hmm. But it's narratively and and uh, pictorially, you know, however I don't want to word it, it, it it's hard to di kind of digest, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So don't lose your main, uh, don't lose your your mindset in regards to your ideas. No. Just really consider planning and people's reaction in terms of their interpretation. Like, okay, what? How is other people going to see this? Even if you can clearly work this out in your head, how does that translate to an audience? Yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, no, it's just about planning. In your case, it's not about imagination or rendering, 
because I think those are both the strong points of your painting. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Brandon. I've been seeing this linger around the, the group for a while. This is cool. Got this. We got this nice badass Dutch angle going on here. Yeah, I like I like your composition a lot. I like your um, and I like the setup. There's, mm -hmm. there's some good world building going on here. I think personally, for me, uh, to create a counterbalance to all this weight that's you know bringing us to here and all all this glory, I would almost illuminate that tent a bit. You know, mm -hmm. I would put some kind of light that we see. Not that I know how to illuminate a tent right right now but you know illuminate that tent a little bit have that light uh coming out of there so mm. it could bring us as like this counterweight to this huge huge amount of contrast that's right there at play i'm sorry go out and say something adam i'm going to just i have to add a little bit of light in here and do it a yeah no no go ahead well what i'm thinking here too is uh Again, I mentioned this with an earlier painting as well, is to be careful not to pull your eye into the corner of the canvas, right? And that tent in the foreground kind of does that. You know what you could actually do is take that tent and the counterweight, that big building that leans our eye over to the left, is to have that, that, that tent occupy that whole corner of the image and, it, and, and scale it up. So it's not just squeezing into the corner there. It's actually completely overlapping the corner and filling. Like this one right here? Yeah, yeah. That one that you're actually in the, in the process of fixing, I would I would scale it up so it occupies that half of the image, kind of yeah. counterbalancing what you've got over on the right side of the image as well. See? And by the issue with the tint, as he mentioned, is if we look at this, this is just way too much pure white yeah. going on here, and it's it's really distracting. Mm -hmm. You want to like you got, you spent a lot of time designing out the layout and the arrangement of the scene, and I think it looks glorious, but we want to like. Get a little more articulation in the sky, in the clouds. Everything's got perspective and form to it. Don't make it so it's at the point of distracting now. Don't take me wrong. Mm -hmm. But this is almost, I'd say, a little underbaked in terms of the execution. Yeah. In terms of the a lot of the background details. Yeah. Like you would see, like, if this is a really nice bright light there coming through, and I'll take that brush again, that same one, you would see the highlights hitting maybe some of the rocks in, like, some of these areas in terms of how... You know, that 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 lighting actually works. Mm -hmm. like, this mm -hmm. is like overboard with it. To, don't do it literally what I just did, but you would see the light hitting some of these mountains. You see the form in them, and then yeah. in a little bit, um, kind of going up across the plains on this side. I'm trying to get. Oh, it's on linear light mode. That's why my brush is acting so crazy. So if we see what I mean, like we'd see. A lot more of the the forms and the wasteland, mm -hmm. out, particularly like over here, because this light is so strong over here, and we'd see a lot of that kind of play into these forms that are happening on that side and this side, and you could just take it down and you know make it make it subtle as, as subtle as you want over here. And I recommend to keep it subtle, but mm -hmm. like, on that note, yeah, definitely see like I, even adding this color in adds a lot of little uh, spice to it. And which brings me to my last thing. This is the focal point. This is the main business of your scene is this tower, is this sanctuary. And it's it's very, very rough. You need to design this sucker out. Mm -hmm. Get a sketchbook, get some paper, draw that thing out as flat and as stiff as you can so you're just working on the design and not a fancy perspective. Take that once you've worked out your design, regurgitate it back into your perspective and draw a perspective and really make it, you know, work it out. Yeah. These types, you know, types of images really take this level of planning and articulation to really get the best out of them. Just brighten up a little bit of the red with some of the tents where the light's hitting it. And you could really make this thing pop, man. It's a really mm -hmm. cool idea. Yeah, I very much like that. Gone over time on the budget again. <laughs> well, whatever. We have so many art pieces to look at. There's no way we can... Yeah. we got to be reasonable right, three with left. the time three it left. takes to look at this stuff. Oh, look at this. Cornelia. 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 Ooh, that's a tricky name, last name. I was trying to pronounce that last name. It's a tricky one. Greetings from Poland. Greetings from America. Hey, cześć. Dzień dobry. Okay, so what do we got here? The unlovely. Of course, Polish um, people are the best artists on earth, right? We Polish know that. Like the Witcher. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. It was their first open world game and my favorite open world game out of any year I've ever made. They did it on their she first said try. it's going to be their last one, which pisses me off. I want them. Although they're working on a new one. I just heard they were talking about... They're working a new... on a cy cyberpunk game. Yeah, 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 which yeah. I can't wait to see. Yeah, I can't wait to see. Hijack from in Poland. Go hijack the 
CD Projekt Red and get us some archived files oh, yeah, yeah. so we can Absolutely. see them. I'm gonna keep this this one simple. Uh, I really like this. Mm -hmm. This is this is a sanctuary. This is a uh, this is an action moment. This is a narrative moment. You've encapsulated so many different types of things, weaved them all into this one image, and it's super cohesive and it's readable and it's easy to understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. I don't have much more to add to that. Yeah. If I were to critique things and wanted to make things a little more direct, I'd work on some of the form and the busyness kind of like over in this area. Mm -hmm. it, not my, Probably my least favorite part of the image, but the rest of this reads really, really well. I'd add to the girl, the illuminated girl up against the wall. She's a little bit tangented with this soldier in the foreground. I would, I would bring him down a notch to frame her a bit better I'll create a bit of negative space between them because she's a bit it's a bit kind of she's kind of sitting on his arm so to speak mm -hmm. which is a bit claustrophobic for me but you uh, even take like all these guys here yeah which is easy yeah. to like we could copy and uh, paste them uh, if my computer wanted to cooperate that is you know bring us even more up into the foreground with them mm -hmm. wouldn't be a wouldn't be a terrible thing mm-hmm uh, and then you know, just scrap what you don't need, obviously. Cut the fat away. And then you can rearrange that character uh, wherever you need to as well in the background. But mm -hmm. either, either outright having them overlap, and I think this even works. It's less yeah. of a tangent in this case for me yeah. anyways. And you're, because she's so bright in the scene, it doesn't pull your eye away from it. Like We, we still sense her importance in this shot. Although... This does put a little. This particular composition does put a little bit more emphasis on the warrior, right? Mm -hmm. It gives him a little bit more importance. Where before she was a little bit more important. So it depends on where you want to go with your story. Right? Yeah, this definitely gives me the vibe of it now that they are really holding the front lines here, trying yeah. to defend this character from unlocking the gate here, yeah, and like trying to fend it off. And I love that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You could definitely yeah. go in and take some cues from something like this and get a little bit more atmosphere to play up in, in some of these to really even separate part of the planes. But, you know, this is really well done overall. Mm -hmm. I would definitely take... I like this one a lot. Your reference is really speaking to me. Take this, make this a really direct shape. Go in, take it, add your blue, or, you know, really play it up. Mm -hmm. Simplify it, um, and I think it will work really, really well. Great job. Beautiful, yeah. Yeah, two thumbs up. Not that this crop is the... That was just like a really quick, dirty method. You could like take individual elements, re-kind of move them around and stuff. But uh, yeah, you get the idea, I think. All right, Patrick. Patrick's yeah, this back. is really nice, too. And he's bringing the blizzard. Yeah. I was looking. I was. I was looking at that before, and I was like, "Wow, that's beautiful design." Is that? Another is that one, a you... blizzard? Does, is that? That's the blizzard mount, isn't it? That's a wow. That's a World of Warcraft mount, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I, don't, I don't think it was a direct and. In, in it, it might be. It he might just has be. a Blizzard style, <laughs> and because he, he shows the subject matter, so I think he definitely. But that I mean, looks I like the, I don't that know. That I don't like know. a PVP mount from WoW. It I looks well, like I, it, no. I recognize. I think I do. It looks very similar to a PVP mount, if I'm not mistaken, from Legion. Not from Legion or from uh, Warlords. I'm not sure, but in any case, it's lovely. It's well done. Mm -hmm. That's all I got to say about that. Yeah. Okay, so there's a little bit, there's a bit of confusion happening here. The there's design of the light. mountain, all that kind is awesome, um, but we need a little bit of that atmospheric depth between our foreground character and our background because there's a bit of a depth confusion, yeah. especially with the blue under the chin of the of the mount. It's this, it's competing with the with the crown, the that kind of design on the crown of the uh, of the of this flying creature, right? Yeah, it's... so I would knock that back a little bit. It's yeah. There's a real kind of fine, delicate uh, balance to kind of have here, and using blues in the foreground versus blues in the uh, in the uh, background as well. Yeah, it's beautifully drawn though. Wow. To, yeah, it really is. And I'm trying to like figure out. You definitely need a separate, like even having him a bit warmer so it will pop. From yeah. The background or have that so light, you know, in value. Uh, the other thing I would mention here is that the mount itself, with respect to the environment, the environment is, has a lot of depth. There's a lot of this lovely uh, overlapping type of style to it uh, that really does capture that kind of hyper fantasy wow feel to it, which I love. 
but the character and mount feels almost a bit cut and paste because it's very two dimensional as far as the angle is concerned. It would be cool to have that that mount coming towards and away from. Have the have the wing up in our face and the head veering away from us to get a little bit of that immersion into the scene. It'll help pull us into it a little bit more. Yeah, and like on that note, you have like really nice warm colors in the reference, and I think. You know, in terms of battling the samesness, samesness of things, I don't even know how to word that. Uh, we want to, like, you want to, like, warm him up. Yeah. So he really yeah. pops from that background. I had to do yeah. a very similar scene, a character riding a pterodactyl over an Arctic, you know, wonderland. And mm -hmm. I had, like, the first, I'm going to make the dinosaur warm, it'll pop up, you know, from the, the cool sky. Yeah, oh, there you go. Exactly. This is what Adam was talking about, having some of the wings come forward in space. Yeah. Some in, Back. That way, it, it feels a little bit more uh, three dimension. Uh, yeah. Three dimensions. So notice how has. in Tyler's piece, the character is the highlighted thing. So that in that particular respect, mm -hmm. the two dimensional nature of it works. Right. It's a little bit. We're looking more from a side scroller type of idea. Where in your particular case, your character's looking off into the distance, to making the... us more immersed into the environment. Right. So. So in which case you'd want and to just... Honestly, that's not even the bad thing to do. You could take your character as... I'll just do this before we move on. Mm -hmm. If you, move, you warm your character up, you even move it and bring us down you know, more into the foreground like this. Yeah, look at that. And then you can put more of that focus, again, still on the... Uh, you know, fill in all the blanks. Yeah. And keep your, your tower there. It'll still be really nice circular composition. Yeah. And now we can identify with the character's details a little bit better because it's closer up to us, right? Yeah. So just a suggestion, but yeah, I think it's it's coming along really nice. Yeah, really nice. Very nice. Thomas, put, put, Thomas Putman. Last but not least. That's, look at this beautiful piece. Look at this wow. glorious submission. Wow. <laughs> Better than a finger in the eye, aye? <laughs> well then. I like great references. Again, using more than just one figure with a stick. See, if if he had just a figure with a stick, this piece wouldn't nearly be as impactful as it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, I think one of the, one of the things is with all of the beauty beauty of this work and the talent that goes into it, a very recurring uh, um, uh, uh, weak point. Okay, is the fact that there's a lot of dark on dark on dark, and you have the heavy textured rocks that completely cancel out in many cases the silhouettes of some of your characters. So you wanna you wanna make sure that the silhouettes using atmospheric fog or something like that, you wanna make sure that the silhouettes of these characters pop. So you have the light on dark, so you're not yeah. getting this you're not getting this competition between different elements in your scene. Same thing with the kind of that structure off in the on the top right. That kind of uh, ruin type of structure, you'd want a bit of an atmospheric depth between that and the mountains behind it, because it's competing a little bit as well. Yeah, there's a, there is a lot of light on dark on this. Although overall, I really adore your palette choice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I really do like it. But you want to take, you know, the contrast out of these background areas mm -hmm. and really get you know the depth. Look how much more depth this has this like with a subtle tweak yeah and and i muted some things and i yeah i may, i probably would want to add to the saturation and get some of that back but um it's a gentle it's always a gentle gentle game of, mm -hmm. of, of balance and give and take with this sort of thing yeah. especially with images that are so heavy in terms of the atmosphere and stuff but like on that note like i would try maybe balance the warm and the cool a little mm -hmm. bit more. There's a lot going on in the sky. There's a lot of that going on in here. Yeah. Uh, and that's just, for you, I think that it's just a matter of simplifying things. You know, I would add something else too, okay? And notice if you actually deconstruct the image into two sections, the background and the foreground, you'll notice that all of your characters, the business end where all the characters are acting is in the dark, heavier area of the painting. And it would, it would add a lot to this image if you actually had some, a lot of those characters silhouetted mm -hmm. along that cutoff, right? Yeah. yeah like maybe a couple like standing little, on the log or something like it's that. It's taking little, like you get the idea up there. You're highlighting the, the, the areas of the, the plane, but none, not uh, any of the actual um, characters. Like, yeah. Down. And that's that's... So we want to see more of is mm -hmm. how these these characters are kind of going to reach there and so simplifying you know, areas like that. that and 
trying to find ways around it so you always don't have to select things like this and just put mist behind them and make them pop. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like, I, I noticed it picking up reoccurring in some of my work and you have to go back to the drawing board to design the image in such a way where you don't always have to select things and you just put mist behind them and make it pop. Yeah. That, that over time becomes a design flaw. Right. And a weakness with your work. So you want to kind of consider how you can arrange elements and place light and things. Like imagine you have this light coming back there, but imagine if you took that light as well, played it some of that light coming in from the foreground, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and hi highlighted the back. You know of you know like character A here. You can see yeah. his little his little leg, and maybe he's like holding a child or something. Now all of a sudden there's a little bit different of uh, a dynamic here and a good play of light and dark and yeah. cool and warm and yeah you can see it kind of and then it'll just kind of teeter teeter off mm -hmm. and so it, this is ends up structurally getting surrounded by cool but right. it, overall your image can be warm mm -hmm. anyways great submission yeah beautiful submission lovely all right i think we've gotten through the whole the whole collection all right guys we're back we deliberated these two are our favorite. We yes. both agree. Yeah, very much so. With um, Cornelius being our absolute favorite and with a close second runner-up by Anton here. Yeah, Just, absolutely. Again, what we look for basically is, you know, technique. Uh, I look for technique, uh, presentation, and um, and design, yeah. basically. Illustration can kind of form into those kind of three categories for me. Yeah. And I think these are most consistently representative of my kind of principles that I look and judge art off of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for me too, I, I would mention just as an as a, as a mention for Anton's piece, the real determining factor between these two was the little extra thought put into visual storytelling in Cornelia's piece, mm -hmm. right? Where yours had Bob the adventurer, right? And just adding that little extra thing would have made this a tie in my, in my, from my perspective, right? Yeah. Cause but, that, but, that city, that compound, that sanctuary design is so beautifully. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And yeah. rendered. Yeah. Rendered is a key word, but everybody did such a beautiful job. Yeah. And I want everybody to have a great holiday. Yes. Um, I don't think I'm, I might not even post the next one until like January 1st. I am taking next week off and I am not doing any like heavy art related things next week. So I'll think about the next topic. We'll post it in the group in the events page, uh, you know, first week of January. So if you guys are watching this and want to get in on the next one. Yeah. Um, and I'll be meeting, I mentioned this to some of the people that were there, I'll be doing Tuesday next week, where I'll actually be in the brush loss group at the, at the awesome. Google Hangout, where there's a link on, let me post this here in case anyone's are watching this like way after the fact and want to know. It's right here. And th they have a Discord group. I know I didn't even get involved with that yet, but the, the group runs its own Discord server. People are making lots of friends. They're, they're talking, but there's the two group, dedicated Google group Hangouts. I okay. go to part one, um, Monday nights, 9 Eastern. I'll be there Tuesday this upcoming Tuesday this week because I'm I'll be busy at my sister's out of town on Monday. But yeah, I want to I, I I love interacting and meeting you guys and talking and we'll share our art stories and and stuff. So it's it's a lot of fun. And yeah. I know someone had just posted yeah here's the Discord Discord server link. So I'm gonna work on putting this a dedicated link up here. Yeah. And let's all make some art friends, right? And enjoy. <laughs> yeah, and being a, being a father of two girls who watched a lot of My Little Pony growing up, then every time I see the word Discord, I giggle. <laughs> and if you watch My Little Pony, you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and I'll definitely uh, Tyler, tell me about that. Uh, uh, remember to remind me about the, uh, the the hangout as well, because I definitely want to join you guys. Yes, we can. Um, we both run mentorships and lessons and stuff as well. I know. Yes. Um, working on um i have two i'm running two courses this upcoming winter tour with cgma if you guys want a real heavy hand with me working full time yes check, check out the classes at cgma and that's good my personal mentorships pretty booked now until about may yeah and so i'm actually i'm actually, actually really setting people up for january so yeah. yeah and i'm booked i'm booked right now until till may and i hope i can even get the people i scheduled by may it, it filled up really quickly uh and it's going well and i many of you are from there even, and, I, and i enjoy meeting and working with all of you it's an absolute honor and a pleasure and my creativity almost feeds off yours at the same time so yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. take care everybody have an awesome holiday whatever your holiday is that you're celebrating Good.